Hey guys, Search Shooting Search Core Gaming, and today we're going to be doing a Novus Eternal tutorial. Now, other you guys might know me as It's Connor, and that's completely right. And we're gonna get into this tutorial. Now, when you first spawn in in Novus Eternal, you will have a world that won't exactly look like this, but it will have a fortress shield around it. Now, the fortress shield will protect you from anybody trying to attack you and your ships that are on top of this planet. So you will come into the game, and it will be looking like this. Now the first things you want to do are know how to navigate this place. It looks really scary. What are all these things? Well, first this is just the back button, so whatever you're doing previously just hits back, so nothing right now. But this will be managing your empires, or managing your sectors. Well, in here you'll have nothing right now, because you don't have any... You don't have any uh, You've never dropped any buildings yet. Now to build these sectors, you'll go over here, and you'll click whatever you want. Now, the vault really doesn't have any meaning right now, so I'm just going to start off with a warehouse. The warehouse is very obvious. It holds all your stuff. So, you want to click build, and it will give you this, and you can put it on a plot of land. Now, you if you just want one, you just after that you just click it. But if you want more than one, hold shift after you've selected it, and you can put multiple. The next thing you're going to want is going to be your factories. Now these will build the components of your ships that you want, that you select in the where uh, the uh, shipyard. So we're going to put down six of these so we can, you know, have a good amount of production. This is generally how many I put per planet. And sometimes this will glitch out, like the ship will just go away and you can't click it. And I'll tell you how to do that, and I'll tell you how to fix that in a second. After that, you're going to want to go to the shipyard. Or, you're going to want to get some shipyards. Generally, again, I would take six. Maximize, you know, building ships. Although, you know, you'll you'll need a lot of resources to build uh, ships quickly. So, yeah. Next will be this, uh, the spaceport. And you only need one of these. I mean, you can have more. If you want to land your ships on this planet, they will go to the spaceport. I don't generally do that. I generally keep all mine space. So, there's no problem with that for me. Then you're gonna want, you know, I, I generally take about four mines because you can, as of this point right now, you can only have f five warehouses because there was a bug with warehouses. And it just gets to be a pain when you have to go into your warehouses and there'll be a lot of resources and you have to shift click and delete them and scrap them. It just, it just to be a pain. So I don't generally do that. So yeah, mine is just mine stuff. And. That's their function. And then the last thing, I, I just put this down, I don't really know if it me have any meaning right now, is the planetary outpost. Now, there's also the laboratory, but these aren't in right now, because a uh, bug was found that kind of, eh, I don't know, just crashed the server. So, yeah, so those will be re-implemented very soon. Trade stations don't really have meaning at this point, because, I mean, you're not going to really trade, you don't have really anything to trade. And vaults, you know, just hold stuff. I mean, I haven't really toyed around with them too much. So, first thing is first, if, did I not put down, ah, yes, I did put it down. So, the first thing is, you're gonna go, want to go to your shipyard. And obviously, if you're just, if you're just new at this point, you're gonna be like, hey, I kind of want to make a few ships that, you know, like, I, I want to go take some plants around me. So, you're gonna go to your ship design, and obviously, I already have a few here, so you won't see all these. You'll just see, you know, uh, you'll just see, a blank, it'll just be blank, and you can't, and you'll be able to click it, but there'll be nothing there. So you want to go to ship designs, and this might look, because it scared the crap out of me when I saw this at first, because, you know, it's a lot of information that you don't know. But, generally, this is just the information, like, the CP cost, which is up here, too, like, of how much stuff you can have. But you don't have to really worry about that. All you gotta really know is that the CP cost uh, of these, and that's generally it. I mean, this is a lot of other additional information that you can also use, which is also stated here. So we want to make a colonizer ship first. So no weapons, maybe just a couple engines. These are very fast engines, so I'm just going to use two. I don't want to make take up too much CP. And then we'll put in an offensive droop, troop drop pods. These are how you capture planets. So you need one of these in your utilities, and you will also need a bay for the offensive troop transports. So make sure you have both of those engines. And 
for people who are gonna ask about this, shields are actually in the researching system, which is the laboratories, and that's not in right now, so there is no shields. Although, when you get shot, it will make the effect of a shield. You actually don't have shields on right now, so you'll have to research those to get them. So after you're done with, you know, creating your ship, you're gonna wanna press save, and you can give your ship a name, so I'm just gonna put I'll just the colonizer, and there's another colonizer, but this one's spelt differently, so it should be fine. You have to wait a second. Sometimes uh, it'll take longer to save, so just remember that. Be patient. Then you're gonna want to click Manage Empires, or you can double click on the shipyards. Go to Shipyard, and then select Colonizer. So we're just gonna build one. And now, depending on the cycles, it'll take three cycles. This is how many cycles, right there will be how many cycles it will take to create the ship. Now, as we're waiting for this to create, I'm going to show you a few useful commands. Number one, how to get out of, right here, space. And now, you'll be in the tactical view, which, using the mouse wheel, you can zoom out and in. And obviously, you'll notice there's other systems around you, so you're only in one system. Another useful fact is to know two other people will be spawning in your system. So, make sure that, you know, you see the people around you, like Pyra is right here, and Pyro Dante is right here for me. These ships, these ships will not be here, and you will not own all these plants. You'll only have one, and will have your fortress shield. I have captured these plants, and that's why I have them. And these are ships right here that I've created. So obviously, when you go to here, obviously when the when the ship completes, the ship will go to the spaceport. Now, in the spaceport, you can choose to auto launch things, which is right here, which I generally just I'm going to click this. So. You gotta make sure, and see, the ship is ready now, and it'll be put in here, and now I will set the auto-launch, so it'll automatically launch any ships that I make here into space. Before we use this, a few other nice commands will be, if you look over here, in the chat box, obviously this is Galactic, this is Global Chat, and this is Alliance Chat, but a good command would be slash FPS, so you know, up here, you can see your FPS, what's that, for what it's worth. And then a really good command when you're out in this view to know is how to go to other systems. Because obviously in the old version you had to, you know, drag and, you know, it's a grid, so you have to, you know, go over here, go over there. And it, took, it could take a while. But what you can do actually now is if you know the system you're looking for, you just go to the chat, press enter, and put slash go to space, and then the system or the system number. So, I want to go to system 3, so I'll put go to system 3 and press enter. And then, voila, look guys, it's system 3. And then, obviously, if you're like completely lost and you're like, oh god, how do I get back to my planet? You go to manage empire and you won't, and depending on how many plants you'll have, the plants will show up that you own and you can double click them and it will bring you back to wherever that place is. So, our little colonizer is made. So, um, if there's a planet, and there is right here, Ice 32, that we're gonna go take. But an important thing to know about this is that these ships right here will go very, very slow. So if you first see the ships and you haven't done anything to them yet, these ships are gonna go really slow. So you can see this would take ages to get from here all the way over to here. So what there is implemented is over here, there is travel speed which is also hotkeyed to T. So if you click travel speed on the ships, it will give a little sign like that, and it will make them go faster. But if these ships are caught in combat, they will, uh, the travel speed will disengage, and they will go back down to that slow speed you just saw, which is kind of the, like the fighting, the fighting speed. So now that that's on, it will turn, and it will go a lot faster, see? So this will take not too long. Now, to actually capture the planet, what you need to do, let's go over to it. You're gonna do, need to do planet interactions, which is down the bottom left, or over here, or bottom right. Click it, and you're gonna wanna bring this crush over to the planet. Click, and then this side will be drop troops. So you'll click drop troops, and it will realign where your ship is going to be. And then, when the ship gets here, which will take a second, it will come over here and we'll start dropping troops onto the planet and after a certain time which is generally I think about 20 seconds it will drop troops and it will capture the planet but you have to remind yourself that 
depending on how many troops are on there, if somebody else owns it, which this is not owned, or actually, I might have already owned this. I think I actually do already own this. That was a bad example, but basically all you do, anyways, is you bring your troops over here, because I already captured everything in the system, I'm pretty sure. And you would, all you have to do is press play interactions, drop troops. And it might still work anyways, so we'll see, we'll see. And what happens is, okay, I guess we'll not do it, that's okay. So what would happen would this would drop a pod and would hit the planet and it would say troops in in this little place right here it would say troops engaging and it would give you a time stamp like 20 seconds. So after 20 seconds, up a little a little bar would come up here with some text saying planet captured. You could double click it and you now own this planet. So you can put your stuff back down, make more mines, make more shipyards and everything like that. So that's pretty much it for, you know, capturing plants. That's pretty simple stuff. Now we're going to start making a few ships. So let's go on to here, and let's make a ship. So you can either, you know, just double click on, we can just go over here, double click on a shipyard, and then a ship designer, or you can just go down to here, and there should be ship designer right here, and it instantly takes you to here. Now, when you're designing a ship, it's good, you know, to make it balanced and such, and it's also good to test. Obviously, everything, obviously you can have different types of ships. You can have a long-range ship that has long cooldown weapons that moves fast, or maybe you can have, like, a, a blunt ship that has very short-range weapons that have low cooldowns and big firing arcs, so, you know, they tank the damage while d dishing out a lot of damage, kind of like what Dreadnoughts are. So, let's make a Dreadnought ship. So all we gotta do is select the hull we want, so I've selected Dreadnought, move to weapons, and then we have a long list of weapons. And now obviously when the laboratories are implemented, you'll have to research most of these weapons, and you'll get theories and such, and you'll eventually be, be able to have most of these weapons. Now all these hull breakers and stuff are good, these are long range, as you can see in the range chart, and do tons of damage, but they have long cooldown, say 30 seconds, so after, so if you just have a ship full of this, they can do a lot of damage, but then after that, they can, if a close range ship gets nearby, they can just dish out, they can be, you know, destroyed pretty easily. So, generally, if you want to go for, you know, a ranged ship, you would put a couple of these cannons, so let's say, let's put three hull breakers, and then maybe a more medium range, such like a, uh, uh, like a 720 rail. Let's do this. So a couple 720 rails. And these icons right here mean that these are cannons. So if I scroll down, you see these. These are beam weapons and such. And there's a third type, but I don't think that's in yet. Um, you go down here, and generally what I like to do when I have my side cannons is I generally love two Proteus, ca uh, two Proteus and two Glow Sticks. Now it's a funny name for that, but these actually are like medium ranged, like nice beam weapons that dish out a lot of damage, and they, they make it nice to do a broadside because they're a decent range and will dish out DPS in the time that it takes to reload, say, these three weapons. Now, obviously, these have a CP cost and it differs in this. It'll show you an overall how expensive this whole ship will cost. But next, we'll be on to engines. Now, engines you have, th uh, you can select three of right now. You might be able to research more. I do not know. But what you'll be able to do is you can see the speed that these give you, the acceleration, deceleration, and rotation. Now, what I like to go for is a sh one engine that has a lot of speed, because obviously, you know, you need some speed in this stuff to be close range or far range to keep out of shots. And then I like to go with this engine, because it might not have as much speed and acceleration, but it definitely has a lot more rotation. And when you're a long-range ship and it takes a long time for you to turn, that means ships can get like more shots off on your back end before you can actually turn your ship away, because you take a lot more damage to the back of your ship where there's no weapons firing at it than at the front of your ship where there's the most armor. So that's a good thing to know. Speed, and then there's, you know, the medium engine that kind of takes the best of both worlds. Utilities, obviously, you can get a lot more with the Dreadnoughts. I mean, there's obviously quite a few that are not here right now, but 
what I'd like to have is an FTL drive. And now, generally this saves, saves some CP cost. I don't normally take the offensive drop pods, because I don't like to, you know, have, like, an all-in-one ship. I like to differ. So I don't generally don't take this. So I'll just leave the FTL drive. And for a battleship like this, this is, this is pretty good. This is pretty done. So we're going to save the design. Let's call it, um, um, Dread Test. And then we're just going to press OK, or you can press Enter. Same thing. Wait a few seconds, obviously, because something like this kind of takes longer. It can take a long time or a short time, depending on what you made and kind of how many you have. So we'll wait. And then it says it is saved. So then go back to the shipyard. And then Dread Test is right there. So we can make a few, and obviously these are going to be more expensive because this is the most expensive hull. We put a lot of expensive cannons, so we can make a decent amount of these without really worrying too much. But obviously, these will take a decent amount of cycles to create. Now I gotta remember it and see. Yes, okay, these are on cycles. And I'll talk a little bit more th about this right now, which is... When, the, when your ships are out in space, and say they're damaged from a ship, battle you can bring them here you can use planet interaction so let's just say I'm gonna just grab a ship I have so I'll bring the that's glitch don't don't pay attention to that that's a glitch um, so basically what you could do say if your ships are bat uh, battle damaged and to, to know if it's battle damaged um, if you look right here this little green part is their health so it'll be it'll go to orange and then the sides will just come and then there just won't be like a side of it there. So that's when you know they're damaged. So you can just pretty much pre press planet interaction, dock, and then they will dock to the spaceport. But make sure you don't have auto launch on because it'll just send them straight back out. And then you can highlight them by just you know pulling a highlight like this, and then press repair and it'll repair them for a certain amount of CP. We're supplying is, you know, for like trading and such. Load and unload, and then just automatically launch them back to the shipyard and such. You can also, uh, it's not in here right now because there's no ships here, but you can also decommission ships. So basically, if you have a bunch of obsolete ships that you don't like anymore, you can just highlight them all, and they all left. And there should be here, I don't know if it's here right now, but you can just highlight them all and decommission them so you don't have to use them. Now we have our three dreads, and people are gonna be like, "Whoa, why is it like that?" So you can you can make you can make like let's say you can make command groups right now, and how to make them is you press Control and whatever key one through nine. So I'm gonna press Control two. So now I have so if I press so if I click away and I'm not attached to any ships right now, see. Right clicking, there's nothing doing it. Press 2, and it brings up all the ships, and I can bring them places. And as you can see right here, these are all of the formations that you can choose from for right now. In, in the future, there might be, you know, player integrated formations, so you can make your own. So I'm going to select this one. Obviously, you know, I'm going to give these guys some. I'm going to make it a bigger group, and I'm going to give these guys some uh, speed, so you know, I don't have to wait. And you can make a formation. So I generally like list formation where you can see see some right now. And you can make it go to the line formation. And then some some people will be like, but these aren't the formation. They don't look like they're in that kind of order. Well, that's because um, some ships are on the different Z axis to make it look look nicer. So if you and this is another command, this is another uh, thing you should know. It's a nice navigation command. If you hold this uh, the scroll wheel down, and you start turning your mouse, you can see into a 3D view, and as you can see, in the formation they're in, they're actually in a straight line. So this is just purely cosmetic, the way they're up and down. So there's nothing. So they're on the same axis. So don't be, don't be worried about that. They're not in actual different formation. So yeah, that's basically how you, you know, put these into there. You can obviously put them into different command groups. So one and two. So you know, we got one right here, and we got two right over there, and move them quickly. And then we'll show you. I'll show you how to use FTL. So, basically, all I gotta do is grab all the ships that actually have the FTL function. So obviously the colonizer did not, so we will not FTL. So I'm not gonna use that ship. No. Nope. So I'll just FTL these. 
these three ships. So you go into tactical view, you press FTL, and it'll give you this little cursor, and you can FTL them anywhere you want. Now depending on the size of the fleet you're FTLing, it might take a long time, and or crash you, and or do a lot of other weird stuff, so don't be surprised if it doesn't work sometimes, but it usually will just eventually get there, it just takes a while. So I'm going to say let's FTL them here, so I'll just click, and then it'll take a second, but then they will all FTL. They will also FTL in a column, like this, so people beware. If you're gonna go into a fight and FTL your things in, make sure it's not in the middle of the fight, because if, if they all turn on you and shoot while you just FTL your stuff in, it will create an explosion which will do AoE damage, and then another one will explode, and then another one, and then it becomes popcorn and all your ships blow up simultaneously. So, you generally don't want that to happen, so, you know, make sure to FTL away from the fight and then come into it in a formation such as this. Another little thing to note is, um, always make sure they're in travel speed before FTL, because if you FTL them without travel speed on, it'll it then they'll be slow for a while. Like you'll see that they just won't; they'll just be wicked slow for a little while, and then you won't be able to, you know, like you won't be able to put them in travel speed for a little while, and then like 30 seconds after that you'll be able to put them in. But that's just a little side note for people who are, you know, like why aren't they going fast? So yeah, just note that. And at this point, guys, and just a reminder, it's pretty much spacebar for everything, so double-click the planet to get into the planet, spacebar to get out, to get into tactical view, spacebar to get back into normal view, and then the and then the mouse, the hold down mouse wheel to navigate around, hold down mouse wheel and just turn your mouse and stuff to make that 3D view. And at this point, you guys are ready to fight. Now obviously, there might be some fighting and tactics stuff that I will probably review in another video, but at this point, you guys know just about enough. If you have any questions, just ask in chat. Ask other people. There's plenty of infiltrators, including myself, who would be more than happy to help you guys. And, uh, and as you know, stated in the forums, there will be uh, something called NA Academy that DTEBS is hosting that I will also be at to help people you know, get to, get to learn the basics of Novus Eterno. Because, you know, it can be confusing at first. So, I uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything I missed, uh, sorry, I will go and, I'll, you know, I'll probably just, like, take down the video or maybe and just re-upload it with that content. But at this point, I just want to say thank you all to who, you know, backed this program. and uh, Backed program. Backed Novus Eterno. This game will be great and... Yeah, just thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.